All right, so now we're going to prove the really important fact about the uh, conjugate gradient method, uh, which is this theorem here, um, which says that this algorithm, uh, when applied to a quadratic function, it terminates uh, in at most n steps, uh, where n is sort of the, the dimension of the problem, the number of, um, uh, number of states that you have. Um, so that's really, really powerful, makes this incredibly efficient, um, yeah, and we're going and, and to prove it. Uh, okay, so there's an important little factoid uh, that we need, uh, which is that the kth, um, uh, the, the kth approximation to the solution, the kth step here, uh, is this linear combination uh, of you know, xj plus the sum of all of the previous uh, lambda i uis, where uh, uis are these conjugate uh, directions. So that just comes from substituting uh, the sixth line of the grayed out uh, algorithm here into itself recursively. Uh, you just get this collection. Uh, of these sums. So that's going to be really useful, uh, so we'll keep it in mind. So the proof of this theorem uh, actually requires us to prove a bunch of other things. Um, and so these, so there's a few lemmas here uh, that we need to prove first before we um, uh, can write down uh, the final proof. Um, and, you know, it takes a little bit of work to prove each of those. Uh, you can read through those proofs uh, uh, in, the, in the book. Um, what I'm actually going to do um, is do something a little bit more direct and a little bit more constructive um, than, these, uh, the, the, than these three. Um, yeah, once you've proven these three, you know, the proof of the actual theorem is really, really simple, right? So um, you basically need to get to this lemma 3.38, uh, which you, uh, which you get by stitching these three things together, uh, and then the proof fault is immediately. So all the work is in proving um, these three properties here. But I'm actually not going to do this. I'm going to take a little bit more of a direct approach uh, and sort of show you how it works um, and give you a, um, a, a kind of a more, uh, more constructive, more straight ahead proof. So here's how I'm going to attack uh, this. We'll end up in the same place as those lemmas take us. Uh, we'll just do it in a slightly different way. So this is full credit um, here to Greg Doherty from Wollongong um, who taught me this uh, back in the day when I was an undergraduate and I still happen to have his notes. So we'll follow, um, we'll follow what Greg did here. So here's the problem we're trying to solve. We're trying to find the minimizer of this quadratic function, right? And the process that we're going to use uh, is we're going to say that the you know, uh, x1 is x0 plus uh, lambda0 times the, uh, the first conjugate direction, uh, and so on. We keep doing this, right? So the thing that we have to show is that we have to show that after n steps of applying this algorithm, uh, by calculating these conjugate gradients and substituting in and stuff, uh, after n steps of this, we end up at the solution, at the true minimizer uh, of Q. And what is that minimizer? Well, if you remember that the gradient of Q uh, is AX plus B, right? And, and we're looking for a stationary point, so we're looking for where AX plus B equals zero. Uh, that occurs uh, when X is equal to negative A inverse times B. Right, so that's the solution that we uh, are heading towards, okay? And so we want to show that after n steps of doing this process, we end up at exactly negative a inverse plus, uh, times b. And that's what we're going to show. So here's the approach that we're going to do. So you remember, that the, the way that this works is that when I take a step uh, uh, from x0 to x1, I do it, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm heading down a curve, right, right d heading down some... Uh, uh, line through my surface, uh, and I choose lambda uh, such that I end up at the bottom of that curve. I take the best, um, I take the best step that I can uh, at e in the direction of u uh, at each step, right? So basically, what we want to do is in the direction of u naught, we want to choose lambda naught such that uh, the derivative of that curve is equal to zero, right? So that we choose lambda such that we're at the minimum uh, of this uh, of this function q along any particular direction that we're heading in. Okay, so this is what we want to demand. So let's actually figure out, let's erase the u here, and let's figure out uh, what the derivative of this q uh, evaluated at x0 plus lambda0 uh, u0 is, what the derivative of that is with respect to lambda0. Okay, so we're going to get a gradient of q in here, and we're going to have to do the chain rule. Right, so if we differentiate uh, inside here with respect to lambda naught, uh, we'll get a u naught, uh, and then we're going to get a gradient of q evaluated at x naught plus lambda naught u naught. Okay? Uh, yeah. 
So what's the gradient of Q? The gradient of Q is AX plus B, right? So this is actually going to come out to be uh, A X naught plus lambda naught U naught plus B. Right, so inside the brackets there is just A X plus B, and X is X naught plus lambda naught U naught. And then what I want is I want to set that equal to zero. So really I want to choose lambda naught such that this whole object there is equal to zero. So I'm just rearranging this expression for lambda naught there. And if I do that, I'll cheat and just write down the answer that I've written down in my notes here. Uh, you can check this, right? So the stuff that doesn't have a lambda naught uh, multiplying it is u naught times a uh, x naught uh, plus b. So we get a u naught transpose and a x naught plus b. And then the stuff that's multiplying the lambda naught that I have to divide by is u naught times a times uh, u naught with the transpose. So we get that. So that's the, my first lambda here. And that's the first step of this algorithm. So let's think about what's the next thing that I want to do. So the next step that I take, uh, I'm going to uh, write x2 is equal to x1 uh, plus lambda 1 u1, right? x1 is equal to x0 plus lambda naught u0. Right? So x2 uh, is equal to this this term. And each step that I take, this will get longer and longer and longer. I'll add on here. Okay, so what am I trying to do here? Well, I'm going to take some step in this direction u1, right, and I'm going to choose lambda 1 such that d by d lambda 1 of q of x1 plus uh, lambda, we'll write the whole thing, uh, lambda naught u naught plus lambda 1 u1 that's all equal to zero. So we're going to do the same, uh, the same type of thing again. So what is this? Right, so what is this ugly object here? Well, it's of exactly the same form as this, right? Except now when I differentiate with respect to lambda 1, I'm going to get a u1 transpose popping out the front there by the chain rule. And then I've got the gradient of q evaluated this. The gradient of q is ax plus b. So this is going to be a x naught plus lambda naught u naught plus lambda 1 u1 plus b. And I want that all to be equal to zero. Right, because I want to uh, head to the minimum along this curve. So what do I need to do here? Well, I need to, um, uh, I need to uh, rearrange this for lambda 1 here. Right? I need to make lambda 1 the subject of this expression. Um, but there's actually something that helps me here. Uh, if you think about expanding this out, I've got u1 transpose times a times x naught here, was the first term. Uh, I've, and then I've got u1 transpose times a times u naught. Right? And that's interesting because if I remember that u not, the, these u's here are conjugate directions, um, you know, a, uh, u1 transpose, let's just write that off to the side, u1 transpose times a times u naught What's that equal to? That's zero, because u1 and u0 are conjugate directions. So actually, that bit disappears when I multiply it all the way out. Uh, so that product uh, term disappears there. And actually, I've just got u1 transpose times a x0 plus lambda 1 u1 plus b, which is exactly the same form as that, which means that my solution lambda 1, you can do the calculation here yourself but it comes out to be exactly the same form as the thing above. All right, so lambda 1 looks exactly the same form as lambda naught did. And it's because u1 transpose times a times u naught is equal to 0. And that trick is going to happen the whole way. Right? So I could calculate uh, x3 now. I'd have three terms here, and I could evaluate this derivative, calculate an expression for lambda 2, and it would come out to be exactly the same form here because of these conjugate directions. I'm always going to get this structure where I get uh, the next step will be a u2 transpose times 
uh, A times U0 will disappear, and uh, U2 transpose times A times U1 will disappear. So I can actually write down the general expression. So what these lambdas look like for any i, so lambda i is going to be negative u i transpose a x naught, I always get that a x naught plus b, all over u i transpose a u i. And every other term uh, disappears there. And that will always happen. So that's a nice expression. And I can use that. So let me come back to my uh, uh, useful factoid here. And let me just show you that again. You know, now I can come back to my useful factoid and I can write out xk, uh, in fact I can write out uh, plug in k equals n here, I can write out xn in terms of x naught plus the sum of all of my uh, lambda uh, star times conjugate directions. And I've got an expression for lambda uh, for lambda i now, lambda i star, so I've dropped the stars here just to make my life easier. Uh, I can now write uh, that xn is going to be x naught uh, take away, I'll start from i equals naught up to n minus 1, uh, the lambda i stars, which are u i transpose a x naught plus b all over u i transpose a u i uh, times by u i. That's using, that's just plugging in uh, to my important factoid uh, where I'm uh, choosing to start uh, at, uh, at i equals naught uh, and go up to uh, uh, j equals uh, n minus one here. Just writing out in terms of this thing. And I'm using the thing, the result that I've just described. Just derived. So now, how can I make progress there? Well, um, I actually earlier proved a very useful theorem, right? So I can write um, any vector as this particular linear combination of conjugate vectors, uh, where I have, uh, you know, a linear combination of my vectors, uh, ui, uk, uh, in the expression, uh, multiplied by this object. Uh, before them, this, this you know, product of all of these conjugate vectors uh, and a matrix, a matrix A. Now, that object there that's in that theorem that we proved looks an awful lot like that, right? So uh, my, vector, uh, uh, my vector V here is kind of this. The only thing that I'm missing is a UI transpose uh, times A. Let's flip back to the, the expression again. So my vector V is almost AX naught plus B. I'm just missing that, uh, uh, that matrix A that's multiplying the whole expression. So the one thing that I need to do here to be able to use that lemma from the last video, right, is to pull an A out the front of this expression. And then I could identify that vector there with V. So let's just do that. Let's pull an A out the front uh, of this of this thing here, and then I'm going to be left with x naught plus, well, I've got to take an A inverse outside the front of B. And then I get this. And so now this beast here, that's my vector V, right? And just by looking uh, at the result, about writing a vector v as a linear combination uh, of all of my conjugate gradient, uh, my conjugate directions, sorry, I exactly have that. So this whole expression here is exactly this vector v. So this is really uh, x naught take away this v, which is x naught take away a inverse b. They cancel out, and that leaves me with negative a inverse b. And what's uh, negative A inverse B? That is exactly my solution X star. Uh, so that's the theorem. Uh, that is actually the theorem proved. And uh, that's exactly what I wanted to show. Uh, and yeah, and we've shown that after N steps, the conjugate gradient method uh, converges exactly 
to the solution. So it only takes n steps. Now you can see straight away, hopefully, uh, that that's actually really powerful. Because if I wanted to calculate uh, x star directly, I'd have to calculate a inverse here. And a inverse uh, takes you know, order n cubed operations um, to calculate, whereas the conjugate gradient method of this uh, actually solves this in just n steps. So um, already, just in terms of doing linear algebra, there's a huge uh, efficiency gain there. Um, it's a really nice theorem. Um, it's just a really powerful uh, tool to use. And we'll stop there. <laughs>